Hello everyone, I'm Caroline and today we're going to make some more spooky Halloween decorations. I've had great fun so far making these and I can't wait for you to see what I'm going to make today. Right, no time for chatting, let's get on with crafting! <laughs> out of the way while we get started. This craft has got lots of component parts but it's good fun. You may remember the skeleton I got from Poundland. Again like Dollar Tree I'm sure you'll find one in places like Dollar General that sort of place. Hobby Lobby possibly maybe a bit cheap for Hobby Lobby. And I've already used the skeleton so now I want to use the ribs. Take it apart. Got a pair of arms if I need them. And a pair of legs with feet. And now I'm going to cut off the pelvis because I only want the rib cage. As I found last time, it's no good using a big sharp scissors, you need a little one. I'm cutting up here. Oh, it's still very stiff, so watch your fingers. Put that pelvis away. Always reminds me of Elvis. When I hear pelvis, they just call him Elvis the pelvis, didn't they? Right, that off, there it is. And now I'm going to paint it a dark colour. Black is best, but if you haven't got black, use any colour. I haven't got an exact measurement for the when I make my own chalk paint. I generally just get some acrylic paint, put in a bunch of, I use talc, but you can use any powder like that, corn flour, something like that, or cornstarch, I think you call it in the States. And then a little bit of water, because it'll be a bit too thick. And you've got yourself, of course, you've got to mix it and then you've got yourself some chalk paint. Sometimes, if I really can't get the, the paint to stick, I'll pop in a little bit of PVA glue, which really makes a sort of black gesso in this or white gesso if you're using white. But it just gives it that extra stickability, but then it is going to be sticky afterwards with the PVA. Well, not always, but I do find sometimes it's got like a sticky finish to it. And you don't have to be too accurate on this. Because all it is working as is a stencil against the light. There we go, that's going to do me nicely. I've now got some Rust-Oleum Furniture Finishing Wax in white. Gosh, these tins last for ages and ages. I've used and used them. Put it on and rub it off. You don't want to completely cover it. It's just to give it that sort of strange, weird, pumpkin-y look. Ah, I'm thinking, why am I getting black hands? It's because of the black paint on here. Right, I need to move that out of the way. We'll give up on that. Take a risk on my desk getting covered in wax. Oh, no. Got black paint everywhere. Never mind, we'll smudge it up. we put this one on the bottom so you can't see it. Look at that. On some crafting channels, the host has got beautifully manicured nails and they always look so glamorous. I usually look covered in paint <laughs> and glue and glitter and whatever else sticks to me. Now I'm going to use some dark finishing wax. A little bit, this is very strong when you're putting it on. You don't want to put too much on. Because of the ruffles, you're not going to be able to rub too much back off. Because, of, you know, not the ruffles, the texture. Just do down the joins. I love using this. It's so much easier than paint. It's so much more fulfilling, I find. You're not going for even coverage. You're going for rough coverage. I bet you've never seen a pumpkin with perfectly clear edging on all the colours, so you don't want to look like that. It'll look too regimented. We're trying to look a bit more natural. And then give the flap bit at the bottom a little bit of a coating. I think these are such a bargain at 150. When I bought them, I did originally think they were a pound, but they weren't. I'm still happy with them, though. And I think this effect is nicer than the paint. And then do exactly the same with the other one. So there we got our two halves of pumpkins. I'm going to pick my favourite one. Whoops, this one I like more than this one, but this one looks more creepy darky. So I think I'll put that one on the top. Time for some power tools. Again, we've already used the sander. Not that you saw. <laughs> I took that outside. Out with the drill. And then I'm going to drill a hole. Wait a minute, where's my block? Never drill without a block. And I'm just going to put a hole through there. And one there. So they match. 
Now below that hole there, I'm going to put in the side here another hole. Watch your fingers if you do this. I thought, well, rather than go getting a bigger drill, I'll <laughs> just wiggle the drill around a little bit. And I've made a bit of a mess, but that doesn't matter. We'll hide it. Not a problem. Give my wire a twist. Bend the sticky out bit in so you don't catch your fingers on it. Now, this is the bottom. You can see the hole. So the next thing I'm going to do is take some lights. I've got this string of light here. And these, the reason I needed the hole bigger was because these are going to be threaded through the hole. In they go. And then glue your controller just above the hole, like that. So you can get to the switch and you can also get to the battery replacement bit. Now I've got to go and dry my ribs with a hairdryer. It's not every day somebody gets to say that. But a few little thick bits here, so I'm just going to brush those off because you're not even going to see that. And I don't want to spend another five minutes trying to dry those. That'll be fine. And now measuring this, I can see that this is still too long. So I'm going to take the bottom ribs off. I want this lid to virtually close. So snip those off. Remember, use a little scissors. Now get some tumbling blocks. Where would we be without tumbling blocks? They're really handy. Figure out how close to the front you want these ribs to go. And then another wood you glue. Pop it in the bottom there. You haven't got to be too accurate with this. And get your skeleton. Put some glue on the front there. Where they're going to be touching the tumbling blocks. And pop them onto... Oh, you can't see, can you? Sorry. There. And hold them till they're dry, which could be a while because I've used such a big wood of glue on the tumbling blocks that it takes forever to dry. But it's worth the wait. If you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And also, why not subscribe? I would love to have you join me when I'm making all these crafts. The more, the merrier. Now, just to double check, I shut my lid and yep, that's working perfectly. So the next thing to do is take some creepy hands. I got these from Temu, but I would imagine that Poundland, Dollar Store, Dollar General, those sort of places have all got these. Hobby Lobby and places like that, I would imagine, is pretty certain. Have a look at your hands and if you were trying to climb out of something your thumbs are going to be facing each other so get your hands make sure your thumbs or the skull's hands are facing each other and we're going to glue these it's very difficult because i've got this big huge lid in the way there we go i'm going to glue these coming out of the front here you still can't see can you there put some glue all the way around and pop the hand in place. No, nope, swap hands, that's the wrong one. <laughs> All that about getting the right th the thumb in the right place, and I got it wrong. Phew. And then we'll go round onto this side and put the other one there. Some more hot glue. It's always good to check out things before you glue them closed because I just figured out that you can't see these lights shining through. So I'm going to wind them a little bit and see if that helps. Now, I don't think these lights are actually strong enough. But it does give a spooky glow in there, so that'll be fine. Now I'm going to add some thick rope around the edge of the pumpkin. I think the most difficult thing about working with this rope is how difficult it is to cut. It's really stiff, but other than that, it's very easy to work with. I think it's very effective. You can use thinner rope if you want to, or twine. And you've also got the option to plait some twine if you haven't got a thick rope and you don't want to spend out on a whole reel just for one project. And now do the same thing to the bottom half. Now we need to do something to the top of this. You could have a stalk on your pumpkin. So I've cut this piece of wood off. It's a bit of driftwood I found in the sea. Hot glue that into place. And then get some of this. I've got cream excels here. You can use straw or anything fluffy, really. Just want that effect coming around the neck of the pumpkin. Out with your hot glue. And then put some of this around. 
trim it as much as you think you need it trimmed. You can have it really overly shaggy. You can have it neat and tidy, short back and sides. I tend to put a lot on and then keep pulling it off until I'm at a point that I can live with. Sometimes I make it far too frizzy. <laughs> it looks like an explosion in a hay factory. Then I'm just going to get some autumn leaves and pop these on the top too. I just think it adds a little bit more interest and gives it that high-end expensive look, which is, you know, quite unusual to think with two plastic bowls and a bit of old driftwood, some skeleton hands, but it can be done. And I'm going to take some of this excelsior. Yeah? I'm going to poke it around the gaps. Glue it onto the bottom layer with some hot glue. This is one of those crafts you shouldn't do if you've got visitors come in and you craft in your living room because <laughs> it's going to take you forever to clean up all these bits. Unless you've got visitors who are crafters and will completely understand and say, oh, I know, my house is exactly the same. And now you can see the ribs in there. So if you decide you're going to do the front as well, you won't see those ribs. You may decide to miss out the ribs completely. Make this as one complete pumpkin, put lots of lights in, and then you'll just have a pumpkin light. I am going to glue a little bit of this over the fingers, I think. Give it a bit more atmosphere. Just keep fiddling around. Put in excelsior where you think it looks good. Do it completely to your own tastes. I'm going to take this, it's a candle plinth and I painted it black. Oh, I've used this in several projects. You probably remember it from some. Pop on a ton of hot glue. And then pop your pumpkin on top. Now you may decide that you want your pumpkin just sitting on the side or put it on a plate or anything. You put it in a basket. I'm just trying to check that it's central before it glues into place. And now there's one thing missing. If you know me, then I always say, any excuse for a bow. And we need to put a bow on here. But I don't want to put anything fancy. I don't want anything posh. I'm just going to put a twine bow. Halfway. Turn out yourself a knot. Now, normally a shabby bow has cut edges, but I quite like the look on that. I may leave it as it is. I'm going to leave those sticky out bits out as well and glue that into place. At the front. Like that. And then I would put... A spider on, but I know a lot of you have said they didn't like spiders in my video last week. So I don't want to put a spider on. So let me think what else I can put on. Aha, uh -huh, I've got this really spooky doll's head. Look at that. I wonder if she'll work. How she's going to sit. Yeah, we need a ton of hot glue. More under the bowl as well, just to be sure. And then pop her in place. And give her a tiny little tool bowl just to hide the join at the bottom. And we're done. Well, that was a challenge. As I said, though, I'm a crafter. Bring it on. <laughs> it's not a problem. We can get it sorted. And we did. Right. Let's see what this looks like on my display. Halloween craft. I got a few bits and pieces. I got this candlestick. I got this for 50p in the sale. It was only originally £2.50, so not a bad price really. And I got this old jar which has got a lot of rust marks on it. It's what they call sick when the glass is like this. Perfect because I want this to look a little bit creepy. And I've got this creepy doll I got from the French flea market. Isn't she scary? So I've taken her apron off and the first thing I'm going to do is to paint over this flower because I don't want any pretty flowers on a scary doll. Use a bit of chalk paint over it like that and just let that dry. If it looks spludgy and awful all the better because this is supposed to be a creepy doll. So now get your paint and your candlestick 
and age it unless you've got a perfectly aged one and i think for this i'm going to do some dry brushing i don't want to completely cover this i want you to look a little bit aged and old and tatty a little bit of heavy dry brushing does that it's surprising how far paint goes when you do dry brushing Now set that aside to dry, that won't take long at all. And now for the very difficult, fiddly and not pleasant bit of painting because she's such a small doll and I can't take her clothes off. I don't know with those, I think. There we go, that makes it a bit easier. And I'm going to leave that cross on and I'm going to paint her as far as I possibly can purple because she looks creepy but not creepy enough. If you've got a more expensive doll that's actually got a detachable wig, that would be so much easier. You could take the wig off and also if the clothes came off, that would be so much easier too. Now, to protect a dress, if you're in a position like me where you can't take the clothes off your doll because they're just glued on, then pop tissue paper underneath bits that could get ruined with paint. Eee, that tickles, that tickles. I've got this little axe. I got this in a tub full of bits and pieces to go on top of cakes from a French brocante. I'm going to paint the handle black. And pop that there to dry. It hasn't got to be completely covered because this is supposed to look rather bizarre, so don't worry too much. The apron has dried nicely, so I can pop her apron back on. Lift your arms up. And now she's virtually dry, I'm going to... Use a bit more black and put some black in her hair. So she looks a bit more of a disaster. She looks like too neat and normal a colour hair on such a crazy looking doll. So let's paint her that way then. We can darken her scalp a little bit as well. This must be the most awkward thing I've had to paint in a long time. I'm very dedicated doing this. I could have given up and said, oh no, I'll do something else. <laughs> but I've decided I'm going for it. I hope you're impressed. Oh, I'm impressing myself. I'm going to put some black lipstick on her. And oh, my Sharpie won't go into her eyes properly. I'll try my Pro Marker instead. That's better. Now, I'm going to use the axe. One, to make her look more creepy, and two, to cover up the mess I made over her dress there. So I'm going to glue her hand holding the axe where it's most beneficial for hiding a mess. About there. Put her hand on there. And then some hot glue there. And bring the other hand there. Now glue her feet onto the riser. Making sure she is as straight as possible. Oops, her hands come off. Need much more hot glue than that. I think while her hair is wet, I'm going to put some of this glitter. I've got a tiny bit of glitter left. Oh, yes. <laughs> I like that. And take my glass, pop some hot glue on this doorknob or draw knob, I think it is. Pop it in the centre, like that. Pop this over the top of the doll and it turns it into a specimen jar. For display this is perfect for halloween but also you could put keep this and then put something else in there to display something for dark academia i love that <laughs> it's so humorously scary mm, i think it needs a bit of finishing off on the bottom so i'm going to use this i've got this gorgeous lace it dangles really nicely and i'm going to attach that with some glue right the way around I'll start at the back you could use ribbon, you could use anything for this, really. Even a little bit of black cord or rope, something like that. But I think this is going to be the perfect finish for this project. So there we go. Let's see what this looks like up on my display.
forget, if you're enjoying this video, then why not subscribe? Because we've got lots more videos coming and Christmas is on the way. Can you imagine the exciting videos we've got coming? I can't wait. Right, back to crafting. For this creepy Halloween craft with a bit of a high-end look to it, really, I've got these shoes. They're very high. They're very glamorous. And they were in the pound shop for a pound. So I thought, ooh, I can do something with those. And I got one of my placemats. This never-ending supply of placemats. This is my last one. I've been using these for ages now. And I've got this, which is just a piece of card. I got this from Hobbycraft in their little bins that they have where you can collect all packaging materials. It was hollow on the end, so I've gone around it with some masking tape. And then I'm going to cover it with some string. So let's move our shoes out of the way. Bring in my, well, it's actually a washing rope and it's nylon. I don't like you working with this nylon rope, ideally. It's a little bit too sproingy. You can't get it to do what you want it to. But it'll do the job because I don't have any orange twine. On with your finger protector. If you like your fingers, don't worry if you don't. I'm going to snip that end off. And now we're going to cover the very edges of this in orange rope. Ideally, you want to be right flush with the edge, not hanging over on the top or the bottom of this. I get all the black paint all over me. This can be quite time consuming, but it's worth doing a good job on if you can. Still being autumn, I'm finding this quite easy to work with. Last time I tried working with it was the winter. Because it was cold and this is plastic, oh, it was really stiff and wouldn't do anything. But it's quite pliable today. And then you know the routine with anything that you're covering with twine or rope, keep going round and around and around. And then you've got that. If you can't get hold of this thick cardboard, just get a couple of layers of cardboard. You could join together some Jenga blocks. You don't have to use this, but the reason why I'm doing it is this is going to be used as a plinth. And it's a bit flexible, so I don't want any accidents happening. So I'm going to glue this to that and then turn it up that way. And then it'll be fine now for putting weight on it. It's not going to bend, which isn't a problem when it's in place. But if you're going to carry it around, it could do with a little bit more oomph. I squash these corners in before I take them because I don't want the corners pointing out and if I'd left them you can see so only just fitting in. Now you can if you want to if you're going to make these to sell put a piece of cork or something like that on the bottom you can get this well you can get a self-adhesive one can't you thin cork so you could put some of that on I suppose you could put some brown paper on anything like that. So now we've got a sort of plinth effect. I'm just going to roughly dry brushes. I don't want it solid black, but I just want to make it look more Halloween-ish. If you overdo it, just rub it back off. Another thing you can do is make yourself a solid plinth from anything. You could use an oval dish if you wanted to. You could get yourself something that was big enough, say a sweet tin, a chocolate tin, and use that. I'm trying to come up with the reason to use up my placemats because I really like to move on. They've been taking up that same spot for such a long time. I'm thinking that I'm better off changing that space up to have something that'll stimulate my ideas again in a different way. So now while that's drying, we're going to get the shoes. So now I've cut up a pool noodle in half and into bits and rounded the edges of some and I'm going to push them into the shoe there and use these as floral foam. They're brilliant floral foam. The fact they're different colours don't matter because hopefully you won't see that. So I've got some black paint on my brush anyway. I'm going to give it a little brush over just to darken it a little bit. I wouldn't normally, but I'm in a very well behaved day today. Usually if it involves paint, I don't do it. I've had a bit of a painty day. And by painting it the same colour as the shoes, I haven't got to worry about going over the shoe a little bit. How anybody can walk in these shoes beats me. I would walk like a duck and then fall over and break my ankle. It's not even my age because I know some people, they give up high heels as they get older. I've never been able to walk in them. I did try when I was younger and I didn't look good. <laughs> now I'm going to make two tulip bows like this and they're going to go on the back of the heel there. Out with some hot glue. Pop it on and then on the other one. Surprise, surprise, exactly the same. Now these are supposed to be witches' shoes. I thought the blackness looked right. 
The high heels looks really power witch. And I thought by adding all these little glam and glitzy bits, it will really make uh, our look. It'll really make this witch look like a very glamorous witch. No, that's still not dry, in case you were wondering. <laughs> right, now I've got these little glass beads. And to finish off the bows, I'm just going to put a bit of hot glue on the bead. It'll probably actually be easier to put the hot glue onto the bow. And I've stuck my finger in the paint again. Oh well, I'm not going to clean it off until I stack this one on. Let's try sticking the glue on the bow and holding the heel. And that would probably be a much neater job. There we go. If ever you're wondering, is this one of Caroline's videos? You can always tell because I'll be covered in paint. So now I put the shoes in position. There's hardly any paint left on this all on me. i got to decide where I want that to go, which is about... I've got lace on my glue gun now, about there. Melt into it with my glue gun. Poke it in there. And decide then if I like the setup. Mm, yep, I like that positioning. So now, out with a glue gun, another glue stick. I'm going to glue these shoes into place using a ton of hot glue. I'm going to put these aside to dry now so I don't get any more paint on me, in theory. Next thing I'm going to do is take a Star Wars bauble. I know, why Star Wars? It doesn't have to be Star Wars. I had these from Poundland years ago. I would imagine that you could have got them at the time and possibly still now in places like Dollar General, Dollar Store, Hobby Lobby, that sort of thing. So you take the end off your bauble. Don't forget to keep it. These are brilliant for Christmas. We'll be using those. Get yourself a piece of old pick that you've cut off. So I'm going to pop my bauble on top of the pick with a little bit of hot glue on it. Out with some Mod Podge. You can use PVA glue for this or white school glue. Most glues will work. The reason I've used black glue is I don't want any of the colour showing through with the black glitter that I'm using. And if I use a different colour, I think there would possibly be gaps. And then you think, no, oh, that's a bit messy. So I think this is the best way to do it. If you haven't got black baubles and you want to be careful, then you can always paint them black first. And I've got some black glitter. And I got my from one to the other or from me to you tubs. And then I sprinkle some glitter all over, turn it over, back the other way. Sprinkle that side. I find this is the best way of doing it because you haven't got to keep clearing it up to put in a container to use again. If you're doing it all on the same day, you can do it like that. And then you just got to try and find somewhere to put the last bits of glitter. It is surprising how far it goes because I didn't know whether I was going to have enough and I got plenty. Well, I've never used black glitter before and I've had this little tiny pot there for ages and never used it because it wasn't enough to do anything really major with anyway. But I love the way they come out. I'm going to use these beads and I got another bit of skewer. It's about six inches long and I snapped it off rather than cut it cleanly because I find it easier to poke in sometimes when they've got a rough end. Stick an orange bead on the top. And then a little blob of hot glue there. On your finger protector and just smooth it off. Turn to the other end and then alternate black and orange. Put a little bit of glue occasionally if you want to, just to make sure it's a bit secure. And then before you put the last one on, a little bit of glue either side. Push it into place. And you might need your finger protector to clean off any excess glue. There we go. That's a lovely little beaded pick. Got one more thing to do on this desk before we move into the other room. I've got this pick. It had five flowers on. These were brown, so I painted them black. And then I've cut the other four off because I don't want anything this big to fit on my flower display. It would look rather silly, wouldn't it? There we go. That's all we'll finish with. And this is very nice, but it's just missing something. So out with the black paint, get some black paint on your brush and flick some black onto the edges of your orange flower. Sounds like a crazy idea, but it really makes a huge difference in this display because they were looking a bit too cheerful, a little bit too, ooh, it's like a field in the middle of summer. But now they look more spookily Halloween. And here are the others I've done too. 
And I think they look so much better with that bit of black on them. Not a lot. I don't want to overwhelm them. I want you to see that they are orange, but I like that bit of black. So now let's go into the other room where I can show you a better angle for doing a floral display. Show you just how this comes together and how spookily glam witch it looks. So this is how far we've got on my other desk, but now we need some space and you need to be able to see what I'm doing with this. Not lying down, but standing up. You can see the base there. It looks a bit odd in orange at the moment, but we're going to add some orange and then it'll be fine. It'll blend in nicely and you're hardly going to see it anyway. Right, let's get started. I'm a bit headless now. Ooh, <laughs> that's the only way you can see what I'm doing on my desk. Right, I've put this on my turntable. It just makes things easier when you're doing some flower decorating. And we're going to start by putting a few bits and pieces into the foam. Turn that around, you can see the foam. Got some nice black flyaways. My orange flowers. Some black and silver foliage. My beaded skewers. Bring my clippers over. It's always good to have everything handy, otherwise you'll spend ages running around trying to find everything. Whoops, I almost forgot my glitter lollipops and a couple of feathers. So I'm going to start by making a basis for the whole arrangement. And for that I'm going to use this bit of foliage. Before I do any more I'm going to take it all off the picks because otherwise you end up having to stop every couple of minutes to take picks apart. So best to get them all done in one go. So I'm going to have similarity on both shoes but they haven't got to be identical. So I'll make a start by doing the same basis on both. You can see here just how easy it is to poke these things into pool noodle. It's just like florist foam. And a lot cheaper if you can pick them up second hand. I don't have a lot of these black foliage, but I think that'll be enough because we've got a lot more to add yet. Now I'm going to come in with our spooky flowers. I think these are going to be too long, so I'll chop them down a bit. Again, chopping them all at one time. Just to save on time. I've got five of these, which is an odd number. I like to decorate with odd numbers, but that's going to be more technical with two shoes. I'm not quite sure where I'm going with this. Go on the adventure together. I'm loving this already. I think the addition of black paint on these has really changed how they look, the effect. I don't want to put too much here because I want to keep the idea of the shoe stood on the other shoe as obvious as I can. So put that one there and then turn this around. I think this one can come in about there. Have a look all around, make sure you're happy with that layout before you do anything else. I'm happy, so let's move on. So I'm going to go for these first, my skewers. I have one coming out of the back of each shoe. The advantage with skewers, if you find that's too long, then you can just snap it off. You don't even need to cut it with a special cutty thing. Now it's time for our lollipops. They're not actually lollipops, as I'm sure you'll know, but just in case you are watching with your grandchildren and they see these that you've made and say, Ooh, Granny's made lollipops, or Grandpa's made lollipops. They're not. You can't eat them. I'll put one there. Sorry if this is difficult to see what I'm doing. I just need to be able to turn it around so I can see where I'm putting them. It looks completely different looking at it in the camera opposite me. Can't really see what I'm up to. So I've got two in this shoe, let's pop two in this shoe. So I've got one at the top, so we put this one near the bottom. And we've got this one coming out this way, so we put this going in the other way and upwards. I've got some feathers and I thought these would be a bit of fun too. I'm just going to pop these in where I think they look good. That's one thing I love about flower arranging. There are basic rules like try to make things either completely asymmetrical, more on one side than the other, or to try to make them very symmetrical. So if you put something at the top, 
You put something at the bottom and if you put something on the right, you put something on the left. But other than that, you can pretty much do what you like. And if you don't want to do that, you haven't got to. You do what you think looks lovely and we all have our own opinions. And this is a bit of everything at the moment. There's some asymmetrical bits, some symmetrical bits, but I love it. Having a look at this side, we've got too many at the top there. So I'm going to take out, ooh, which one shall I take out? Take out this one, and I'm going to move this one into the bottom of this shoe. I've got some floofy bits. I love floofy bits, and I think they really finish off your flower arrangement. If you're doing this, you think, why won't these stick into my foam? It's probably because you've got a leaf or a petal over the top of where it needs to go, and then you can't break through the actual fabric of the flower. So just make sure that there's nothing in the way, otherwise you'll get really frustrated. So just check that out. You don't want to get yourself frustrated for nothing. I've had to shorten these. When they were full length, they had a lovely droop to them. But they were just far too long for this. They were out here, they were look really silly. So I've had to shorten them, so I'm not quite getting the same effect as I like to have. I love my fluky bits to come out and over. In here I can see some foam if you look really carefully. So I'm going to put the piece in there just as a filler to fill out the inside there and let's have a look if we got any other pieces where you can see yes I can see some in here too so I'm going to pop a piece in there as a filler so what do you think of that for a super crazy Halloween creepy pair of shoes <laughs> I think it's wonderful and I think it's exciting it's got movement the thing is if you just put a few little flowers in and all the same length and all the same texture and design it looks a bit static had as many different textures and shades if you want like with this it's all blacks and oranges but there's something different we've got glittery bits lacy bits fluffy bits black with silver on we've got black on the orange like this it all comes together in the theme but has such a lot of movement life and vibrancy right let's see what this looks like up on my display I hope you enjoyed watching that. Which one was your favourite? I'd love to know. I think my favourite was the pumpkin. But then again, I changed my mind a lot. So it could be something else tomorrow. If you've enjoyed the video, then don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And why not subscribe? So you will get to see all the exciting videos we've got coming your way over the next weeks, months and years. Right, I'll see you next time. But until then, don't forget, happy crafting and have fun. Bye.